Hello everyone, this is uh, Sheba Joy. Uh, today I want to talk about believers versus unbelievers. Again, believers versus unbelievers. Um, the reason I uh, have, uh, I mean, every, every message that I give is Holy Spirit inspired. And the and uh, and by the way, before we get into the message, I would like you to please uh, subscribe my channel, which is Zion Shakaina. Um, subscribe, like, and share and comment. So that'll help. And thank you for doing it. So, believers versus unbelievers. Who are believers? Believers of Jesus are no one, <clears throat> but they are rooted in the Word of God. They know the Bible. They pray every day. They read the Word of God every day. They ponder on the Word. They meditate on the Word. And uh, they believe in signs and wonders and miracles. Uh, and... Um, and... Uh, uh, they also um, believe it, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. And uh, <clears throat> and most of the Christians or the believers, they know uh, the stories from the Bible very clearly. They know how Jesus was born. They know the Old Testament. They know the New Testament. And I partly, whether they understand or not, they know the Revelation also, the book of Revelation so they know lot, lot, lots of things, you know, and they believe in the Word of God. They believe in Jesus. They believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the uh, Holy Spirit, which is Trinity. Uh, and we call that as a triune God. All, <clears throat> all of them in one, okay? It's not like a different, like how we have spirit, soul, and body. It's the same thing, too, because Jesus came on the earth. We believe him as <coughs> God the Father. I mean, sorry, God the Son. He is there on the throne, so he is God the Father who Moses, who spoke with Moses and in olden times with many of the prophets. And uh, God the Holy Spirit is when Jesus died on the cross, um, his spirit he gave us because he said, I can be with you all the time, so I'm giving you my spirit. So these are pe so the, uh, the believers are these people who believe in the word of God. <clears throat> in Jesus, in Trinity, in from Gen and believe in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Who are unbelievers? <coughs> the unbelievers are there's some kind of smoke that is coming from outside. The, the unbelievers are people who don't know about Jesus. They don't. <coughs> they don't. They are not. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't know the Word of God. They have never seen or heard about Jesus. Um, and uh, they don't know about what signs, miracles, and uh, signs and wonders and miracles are. Uh, they don't know the life of Jesus. They have not studied Bible any time in their life. Um, and uh, they uh, are the people who just won't accept the Christian faith. Now, Christianity is not a religion, right? It's a faith-based, uh, uh, faith-based structural unit, I would say. So, uh, the unbelievers have never, like, tasted the goodness of God, have never seen Jesus. So, <clears throat> many factors are there which the unbelievers and the believers can be cater uh, categorized into. Uh, two different uh, uh, boxes, two different, uh, you know, things. So, <clears throat> now the reason, so what I wanted to tell is, here I wanted to talk about is, uh, it's very interesting, the whole thing I think has come up from this phrase that I put it on Facebook, which I said that, you know, admire the um, artist, like the film industry, I mean the film artist. And they could be like anyone, directors, actors, singers, um, or the crew, or anyone, you know. I just said admire them and 
learn from their hard work and try to walk in the greatness they are walking. I did not say uh, believe in their faith, whoever they may be. I just said learn to recognize their good qualities, learn to recognize their um, you know, hard work, because they really do work hard, you know. They're not getting any free money, they, they have to go through a lot to get into that kind of name and fame. And, uh, and, and the effort that they put in, you know, it's almost like they work for 14 hours or 16 hours or something like that, you know. And then they become great and people just applaud and all that. So nothing has come to them easy, you know. They also have struggled and toiled and all that. So I said that. So I got like one or two responses from people and I'm not uh, uh, saying anything to you uh, but I'm happy that actually you responded and because of that this message uh, I'm, I'm bringing out this message. Now uh, the one or two comments that I received from that post was we don't have to walk in their steps, we don't have to know about them or their greatness, we have to look to Jesus and the apostles or the disciples to uh, uh, to uh, uh, be the light and around our world. Now I want to ask you and 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 the other comment which said that they are not going to heaven, they're going to hell. You know, that was, I think, <clears throat> too drastic for me uh, to even feel that because, guys, you don't know what heaven is. Uh, sorry, what hell is. You cannot tell a person they're going to hell. Hell is a very, very, very dangerous place. Hell is a place where if you know for real what it is, you won't even utter the word. So when the comment came to me, I started thinking about the first thing that came to my mind is, as a Christian, do you know that you're going to heaven? Leave them where they're going and all that, but do you know? And, uh, and we as Christians, I think we should feel very sad about the, non about the unbelievers and non-Christians because they haven't heard about Jesus in their lifetime. They do not know who he is. They haven't confronted him or received him as the Lord and Savior, they have no clue to who he is. Now whose duty does it become to uh, uh, make Jesus known to the world? Didn't Jesus say, um, go into all the world and preach and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit? That's what disciples t uh, uh, did. And if you are just keeping the gospel around us, uh, sharing with our fellow people, how will they know? And how can you blame and tell that they will be going to hell? That is very wrong. That is very bad and sad also. We, I think, as Christians should not want anyone to go to hell because God himself did not go to hell. If you know the heart of God, he did not, he did not make hell for people. He did not make hell for mankind. He made it for Satan and the two-thirds of the angels that he took, uh, the Satan, that Lucifer, took down to hell. It is Satan's, Lucifer's plan to bring mankind into hell. It's never a God's plan, you know. So, uh, m as Christians, I think it becomes very important for us to uh, understand who our God is first and know who He is and what He wants from us and how He wants us to live. Many a time, you know, we call ourselves Christians, but many Christians do such heinous crimes, such uh, unstoppable, I mean, unimaginable crimes they do. You know, they go to church and then they drink alcohol. They go to church and they are involved in prostitution. They go to church, they do many things at that time, or they go to church and slander, they go to church and gossip. Are these the qualities of a Christian? Are these the quality, qualities of people who know that Jesus had asked you and you have read all that in the Bible? Do you think you should be doing all these things and call yourself a Christian? So, and on the other hand, if an unbeliever has done all these things, there is nothing to be blamed about him or her. Why? Because he hasn't read 
God's instructions. He hasn't read what the Bible has said. No one has even told them. So we cannot blame people like that. At the same time, on the other hand, if they are good, you know, they're doing the right things, being kind to one another, <clears throat> supporting the weak, you know, not going, uh, not fighting with other people in a ruthless manner, you know, for lands, for properties, for name, fame, position, and all that stuff. Don't you think their character is much better than the character of Christians? Some, I, I mean, not all, okay? So don't get me wrong on this again. So, you know, we are, God, Jesus says that our, our righteousness is like filthy rags before him. What are filthy rags that they cannot even be touched, that they're so dirty. So if you think that we are righteous, I don't think you know uh we have we know enough gospel we know enough um we know about our god because jesus said he did not come into the world uh to save the good he came into the world to save sinners and uh, i think uh, another thing is important thing is you know we have crucified christ many times one such example that I want to give is when there were two criminals, actually, thieves hanging on either side of Jesus on the cross. One criminal, one thief, uh, talks to Jesus and says, you know, you are the Messiah, so why don't you save yourself and save us? And the other thief on the other side of Jesus uh, on the cross, he says, will you how can you talk to a messiah like that and he tells jesus can you remember me in your paradise and what was jesus response he, jesus's response was you i will sh you will you will be with me in paradise to this other thief now the person now the other thief who said why don't you save yourself and save us probably he knows that jesus is god that jesus is the messiah that jesus has done many, many miracles or probably he's a christian too you know in my imagination i'm thinking like that but believingly un unbelievingly he did not believe in jesus and look at the mocking he has done and no and if he was a christian or if he followed uh, biblical principles yet he did crimes and he was hung on the cross and look at his and look at his nature of saying that of having the guts to say why don't you save yourself because why would he say that if he didn't know about jesus why would he say that if he didn't see jesus miracles why would he say if he didn't believe in jesus why would he say if he didn't know the word of god probably he knew all that and he was a christian and still he said that i mean it's my imagination again you know i'm thinking uh, in a kind of like revelatory way but the other person who didn't even know about Jesus, probably he's not a Christian, he's a non-Christian, and he, for the first time, you know, he had seen Jesus, and for the first time he had the conviction in his heart, and when he saw Jesus, he felt different, you know? So, that is what we need to worry about, you know? We're not just here living on the earth to suffice our lives, to bring goods to our lives, to be happy, to do this and all that. See, every Christian has a mandate. Every Christian has a, a believer should know uh, what he what he was born for, you know, on this earth. All the other things are little gifts that God has asked you to enjoy, but not make them as, they, as your livelihood, you know. You should, every Christian should, and one day, folks, leave unbelievers where they're going we know that and okay when we stand before God and all Christians will stand before God do you know that we will stand before God and the angel will be picking up all the things that we have done from the book and then we have to give an answer to God in front of him on his, before his throne that judgment day is only for Christians and not for unbelievers do you know that so how can we justify and say that we are good, we are going to heaven and unbelievers are not going to? Because you never know, like the two thieves on the cross, one who maybe actually believed Jesus went into hell and the one who did not even believe Jesus went into, went into heaven with him. 
So now to each his own, you know, Shakespeare said that. We need to be very, very accountable of our lives more than they, because we know the word of God. Like for example, when an engineer, you can't ask the engineer to go and perform a, sur a surgery, or can, nor can you ask the uh, surgeon to go and build a house for you, a dam or anything like that. So each one has their own own, own things. So like that, um, we are given a commission to, to, to spread the gospel and uh, to make him known and tell everyone that Christianity is not a religion, it's a faith-based, uh, uh, faith-based, and you just believe him to get to heaven. But if they don't, unbelievers don't listen, the non-Christians don't listen, it's fine. You have done your job. At least God knows that you have done that. The angels have written, uh, put a check mark saying that X has done, try to tell about Jesus to A. Y has done something. You know, all these things, you know, A, B, C has done their work to tell about Jesus, you know, all that. So, uh, to the non-believers. But, you know, let's not discard the unbelievers saying that they will go to hell or they will, uh, they, uh, they are, because see, the thing is, knowing about Jesus, knowing about God, Christians do so many wrong things. What do you have to say about that? These unbelievers, they don't know about Jesus, and yet, you know, they have some character, some goodness, some uh, right things. And, and, you know, the change of heart happens when the Holy Spirit grips them. So... It is important that we don't, you know, judge people in the way that they should be judged, not in an unwise way, not in the way that, you know, is not also pleasing before God. Because the first thing, you know, you know, my mother always used to say that, uh, you know, they, they're doing, I mean, the I'm not going to go into the d deep of uh, all these things, but... My mother used to say, when she used to see some, you know, things that the unbelievers do, immediately she never used to judge them. She never judged, in fact, anyone, you know. And immediately she used, she used to say, poor people, they don't know about Jesus. You know, and she was a great evangelist. She went into a lot of villages and did her service and ministry and lots of things, you know. And that's why she's received the crown of life. She's not there anymore. I do miss her a lot. She's in heaven, but her guiding light is always with me. Her presence, you know, is with me like an angel. But what I I uh, think and know is that, you know, we actually have to feel sad for ev every time, you know, we see non-Christians not knowing about Jesus. And I, I, and I feel that, you know, when I see people... I just cannot imagine that so many people will be going to hell because the thing is, if we don't tell them, they will not be educated about Jesus. They will not know who Jesus is. And and when we go to heaven, before God, when we stand, every person has to stand. Every Christian has to stand before God. And when he says, look, A, I asked you to, you know, you had the chance to change about 10 people. You had the chance to change about 20 people. You had the chance to tell about 30 to 30 people about me. What did you do? If the answer is not going to be the way God expects, folks, you'll be in real, real trouble. So I think, you know, we have to feel actually sorry for the unbelievers of not knowing the truth. And we should feel more sorry for ourselves for not telling the truth. So, um, and, and one such thing uh, that I want to add is when I was in my third grade and I used to go to my mom, used to send me to Sunday school. In the Sunday school, I still remember all my Sunday school teachers. In third grade, I had the, uh, this wonderful, wonderful, very, very sweet um, lady, uh, her name was Sukirti teacher in Methodist church and most of the Methodist people might know her. She passed away recently and it came as a shock to me. She was very young though. I, I don't know what happened but uh, she was such a sweet person. So she told about Jesus and she said the same story that we have to stand before Jesus one day and my imagination went the other way. 
I was, you know, in my third grade, about seven years, I think. And um, I thought, you know, it's so nice to be before Jesus. And I was not thinking that she wanted me, us children, to write what would Jesus ask us when we stand before him. So everyone said sorry to Jesus. And even I said sorry to Jesus when I stand before him and things like that. But also I wrote many other, other things asking him, how did you walk on earth? Where were you? Why didn't you come to Hyderabad? <laughs> so in my little uh, childhood nature, I said all these things and I wrote to her. She was really astonished. And she said, you know, she, uh, God is really going to show you all the questions that you wrote. And then she showed that to my mother. <coughs> so, and also my Aunt Muni, because she used to be with us in Sunday school. So this, you know, is what I think we need to be more focused on. Because our life is given by God. And... Our destiny is written in, God, uh, in God's hands, you know, it's already written. So, and then what we do with it on this earth is very important because you're not here by accident, you were here. And, and another thing is we are so privileged to be born in a Christian family, you know, it makes it so much easy to believe in Jesus. What about the other people? It's just so hard for them to remember, for them to even acknowledge that Jesus is God. Or for, and it's kind of a very wrong thing for them to believe. So just imagine where they're standing. We are actually very privileged to know who Jesus is and who Jesus is in our lives. And so we must take that as an opportunity to talk about him to the others so that others also can be privileged like us so this is what i wanted to tell i uh, and uh, may um, and and yes so may the lord bless this word thank you